Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Earlier this week, Apple announced and began to ship its new 13-inch MacBook Pros that feature the new scissor switch keyboard that has now been implemented across Apple's entire notebook lineup and some new internal upgrades for the higher end models. We actually went hands on with the all new MacBook Pro and I'll leave that video linked in the upper right corner. And we also compared the new Google Pixel Buds up against Apple's lineup of AirPods. And if you wish to see that video, I'll leave that linked in the card as well. Apple also announced this week an official date for its now virtual WWDC event, which is slated to begin on June 22nd. It will be hosted in the Apple developer app as well as the Apple developer website, and it will be free for all developers. Apple is also planning to host a keynote event, presumably on June 22nd as well when WWDC begins. There's also a possibility that Apple could announce some new hardware at the event, like an updated iPad Air, a new 23 inch iMac, and a new Apple TV, as well as much more. Speaking of a new Apple TV, multiple rumors have indicated that Apple is working on a refreshed version of the Apple TV, and that an updated 4K Apple TV model is ready to ship. Beyond the new processor, we're really not expecting major changes to an Apple TV, at least not right now. There have been signs of a new Apple TV with an updated remote in leaked iOS 14 code, but it's not clear if that's the new Apple TV that's rumored to be coming soon, which will feature remote control updates. Personally, I'd love to see a major change to the remote since I'm just not the biggest fan, but my expectation is that we will be getting more of an internal upgrade type update. In other product news, there are a few potential delays on the horizon, starting with the rumored update to AirPods. Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo has said that mass production of third generation AirPods will begin in the first half of 2021, followed by mass production of second generation AirPods Pro between the fourth quarter of 2021 and then the first quarter of 2022. Co also expects Apple's rumored high-end over-ear headphones to enter mass production at some point in mid-2020. And actually, in that video that we put out this week about the WWDC event and the rumored hardware, it's possible that Apple might actually announce those new headphones at the event. But of course, we'll have to wait and see on that. On the mini LED front, it looks as if the global health crisis has also delayed the adoption of mini LED technology that Apple has been rumored to implement across four to six products like the 12.9 inch high-end iPad Pro, a rumored 14.1 inch MacBook Pro, along with the updated 16 inch and more. Future mini LED displays will also use approximately 10,000 LEDs with each one below 200 microns in size. Mini LED displays will allow for thinner and lighter product designs while offering many of the same benefits of OLED displays used on the latest iPhones, including good wide color gamut performance, high contrast and dynamic range, and local dimming for truer blacks. All of that just really means that these displays should look a lot better than some of the standard LED displays that we're used to. And finally, in some quick headlines, Sonos launched its new Arc soundbar that features Dolby Atmos support as well as AirPlay 2 compatibility. The Arc will now replace the discontinued Play Bar and will launch at $799 in both black and white color options. I personally love my Beam, but I would like something a little bit bigger in the basement where we can kind of crank the volume up, so I'm looking forward to hopefully checking out the Arc soon. Samsung has also announced its plans to launch an innovative debit card as part of a new mobile-first money management platform. As a person who absolutely does not like carrying physical cash around, I am all about increasing the options for more mobile payment options and support. It will be interesting to see exactly how this will compare to Apple's Apple Card as well. But that's it. These are the headlines for the week. And of course, as with every video, I would absolutely love to know your thoughts about everything that we just talked about or maybe other things that are going on in the Apple world that we did not cover. Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And also be sure to stay locked in to MacRumors.com or subscribe to this YouTube channel for up-to-date news and information. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.